years old, Sam Darnold was expected to be the savior of the Jets franchise. But just three years later, fans were rooting for him to lose so they could draft a new quarterback. So how did Darnold go from unwanted to playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the league? Well, to figure that out, we have to go back to his sophomore year of high school, before Sam was even a QB. As a sophomore, Darnold was a starting wide receiver and linebacker on his high school's football team. However, when the team's starting quarterback got injured in the middle of a game, Sam was put under center. Somehow, he led the team to a comeback victory, but then returned to wideout when the team's QB1 was healthy for the next game. The following year, as a junior, Sam decided to permanently switch his position to quarterback. He won the starting job, but in just the third game of the year, he broke his foot, which ended his season. This was disastrous timing for Darnold. His junior year would have been the ideal time for him to grab the attention of college scouts. But now, with barely any film on him, college coaches didn't feel comfortable offering him. After his foot healed, Sam was invited to throw for coaches at his hometown school, USC. The Trojan coaches were wowed by the QB, and following a great performance at the school's recruiting camp, USC offered Darnold a scholarship despite only starting five high school games. After committing to USC, Darnold played his entire senior season. That year, he showed the college they made the right choice offering him and racked up 3,800 yards and over 40 total touchdowns. When Darnold arrived at USC, he was buried on the depth chart. Future NFL QB Cody Kessler was the starter, while former five-star recruit Max Brown was the backup. So Sam decided to redshirt that season. The following year, 2016, Brown was named the starter. But after the team started the season one and two, Darnold was named the team's starting QB for their week four game. In his first collegiate start, Darnold turned heads, racking up nearly 300 yards from scrimmage. But it wasn't enough as the Trojans lost a heartbreaker in the final seconds. The Following worst, that bro. game, Darnold and a few of his teammates called a players only meeting and said, we can't quit now. And they didn't. After that meeting, USC went undefeated and won nine straight games. The Trojans looked like a totally different team with Darnold under center. In November, USC they went Trojans? into Washington and took down the number four ranked team I in the nation 26-13. By the end of the season, the Trojans were the number nine team in the country and set to face off with number five Penn State in the Rose Bowl. With just under two minutes remaining in the game, USC had the ball at their own 20, down 49-42. Darnold led the Trojans down the field, then threw an absolute strike of a touchdown pass to tie the game with just over a minute on the clock. After their defense picked off Penn State on their next possession, USC hit a last second game well, winning field goal. In that one, Darnold set the record for the most touchdown passes in Rose Bowl history with five, and also the most total yards with 473. Sam finished his first year as a starter by completing 67% of his passes for 3,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. Entering 2017, technically Darnold's sophomore season, expectations were sky high for the QB. He was one of the favorites to take home the Heisman Trophy and projected to be a top 10 pick in the upcoming NFL draft. However, the season didn't start as expected for Darnold. Arnold and the Trojans. After it? opening the year as the number four ranked team in the nation, USC dropped to number 18 by the end of October after losses versus number 16 Washington State and number 13 Notre Dame. Throughout just the first six games, Darnold had already thrown as many interceptions as he did the entire previous season. The team's poor play wasn't necessarily viewed as Darnold's fault. The Trojans had a ton of injured players on their roster and the coaching staff was far from perfect. Despite the shaky start to the year, USC finished the regular season with an 11-2 record and was set to face number 5 Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. Sam threw for over 350 yards in that one, but had an interception and zero touchdown passes. Ohio State won 24-7. Sam's second collegiate season was statistically worse than his first. He completed 63% of his passes for 4,100 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. Despite this, after the 2017 season ended, the 20-year-old Darnold declared declared for the NFL draft. During the pre-draft process, no one really knew which QB the Browns would select first overall. Would it be Josh Rosen from UCLA, Baker Mayfield from Oklahoma, Baker? or Sam Darnold? As Baker? draft day crept closer, it seemed more and more likely that Darnold would be going first overall. But then, on the morning of the draft, news broke that Cleveland would actually be selecting Mayfield number one. The Giants held bro? the second overall pick. Like With Loki? Darnold unexpectedly still on the board, Loki having like a comeback year year you know what i'm saying he last year was pretty good decent 
this year's having like, you know what I'm saying, man? Many believe the team could take a chance on the QB. However, New York decided to stick with Eli Manning for another year and drafted Saquon Barkley. Saquon. With the third overall pick was a team everyone knew was going to draft a quarterback the Jets. So when arguably the best quarterback in the entire class fell to them at number three, they drafted him. It seemed like New York just got the seal of the draft, and maybe their long overdue franchise quarterback. After an impressive preseason, the Jets named Darnold their week one starting QB, making him the second youngest quarterback ever to start an NFL game. However, on his very first pass, Sam did exactly what you're not supposed to do. He threw across his body, which resulted in a pick six. But the rookie bounced back. He went on to complete 76% of his passes for 198 yards and two touchdowns touchdowns as yet. the Jets beat the Lions 48-17. So now, Jets fans were really excited. I mean, it was looking like this could finally be their guy. Sam ended up having an up and down rookie season. He had some really bad games like his zero touchdown, four interception performance versus the Dolphins, but also some really great ones like when he passed for nearly 350 yards and three touchdowns versus the Packers. The Jets finished 2018 with a 4-12 record, which resulted in head coach Todd Bowles being fired. This ended up being a huge mistake because who New York hired to replace him was probably one of the worst coaches the NFL has seen. This guy, Adam Gase. He's probably making this face right here because he's shocked. He's probably like, how the hell did I just get hired weeks after being fired by the Dolphins for being a terrible head coach? Yeah, I can't answer that either. The Jets did make moves that offseason though to try and help their young quarterback. They signed one of the best running backs in the league at the time, Le'Veon Bell, but then fired their GM after signing multiple big name free agents oh. and making every draft pick because you know that makes sense and that is great timing. Like also guys, ball, these are my picks for this week on my sponsor for this season. No, everybody's trying to give me the game, but I don't want to game thing with less than five minutes remaining in the third quarter. But then the Bills scored 17 unanswered points and won the game. What made this loss hurt even more was the fact that Darnold missed multiple open wide receivers in the final minutes. However, just when Jets fans thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. A few days after the first game of the season, Sam was diagnosed with mono. The kissing Sick disease, the sickness you get as a teen. And unfortunately for Sam, he was the butt of so many jokes because of it. I mean, he wasn't done any favors by ESPN with this graphic. I, I was laying in bed watching the game and that comes up. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Like yeah. all my yeah. phone just blew up. All my friends just <laughs> like point, all, all dude, caps, ha, ha 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 ha, crying, laughing face. Like With mono, your spleen swells, which means it could rupture if it gets hit. So Darnold had to wait for it to go back to its normal size before he could play again. Sam returned to the field in week five. At this point, the Jets were 0-4 and set to host the three and two Cowboys. Darnold absolutely balled out in this one. He completed 78% of his passes for 338 yards and two touchdowns, which led New York to their first victory of the year. However, things couldn't have gone much different the following week. In the very next game versus the Patriots, Sam completed just 11 of his 32 passes for 86 yards, Ooh. zero touchdowns, and four interceptions. But of course, because it's the Jets, things got even worse after this game. Darnold was mic'd up during this matchup and was no caught saying way. this on the bench. Seen ghosts. So just two weeks after seen getting over ghosts. the mono jokes, Sam was now the butt of seeing ghost memes. I mean, he was absolutely destroyed for it online. By the way, for those that uh, don't know, seeing ghosts refers to when a quarterback has been under such heavy duress so much that he feels like there is a free rusher coming at him even when there isn't. And that forces him to make bad throws, throw the ball away, and basically do things he shouldn't do with the football. Despite having one of the worst offensive lines in the Yo, league, Sam what? finished the year strong, winning six of the last eight games. During that stretch, he averaged nearly 250 passing yards a game while throwing 13 touchdowns. I feel like Loki, like when he's got good protection, he does pretty well, bro. Even like, like if he has even decent protection, because like when he rolls out, he's pretty like good as well. But but then he just has like these these like periods of time where he just like sucks. You know what I'm saying, bro? But hey. So far, he's been he's been playing phenomenal for the Vikings. You know what I'm saying? I can't be mad, bro. You know what I'm saying? Five and oh, what? Five and one now. You can't be mad, bro. We have one of the best starts in later uh, last few years. I ain't gonna lie.
touchdowns and just four interceptions. His second season in the league showed improvement across the board. He finished 2019 by completing 61% of his passes for 3,000 yards, 21 Yo, total touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. Yo, he has a freaking cannon. However, just when it seemed like things were heading in a positive direction for Darnold and the Jets, everything went off the rails. Before the 2020 the season started, Sam's number one wide receiver, Robbie Anderson, left in free agency. Now his top two targets were Jamison Crowder and Brashard Perriman. You know, no offense to those guys, but neither of them are true number one wideouts. And five games into the season, Le'Veon Bell was released. The Jets ended up losing their first 13 games of the year. Darnold missed four of those matchups due to a shoulder injury, but when he was on the they field, he wasn't playing games. well at all. It's not hard to understand why though. The team was a mess. The offensive line was yet again one of the worst in the league, and the coaching and play calling were atrocious. Le'Veon Bell actually came out and said that Gase was confusing Darnold. He said, quote, Sam Darnold didn't even know like the actual line's protections because he's so confused about our offense because the coach is confusing him. Former Jet center Ryan Khalil also shared how Gase's coaching messed with Darnold's play. He said, quote, it wasn't a system that allowed him to evolve and make decisions on his own. I think that was the hardest thing. Also, recently, Bell tweeted again just how annoying Gase was as a coach. He wrote, quote, I still randomly think about how pissed I used to be in the huddle when Adam Gase would call 21 dive on second and 10. Mm. Sam would be saying the play out loud, just shaking his head in the huddle. LOL. By the middle of the season, Jets fans were calling on their team to tank so they could replace Darnold and draft quarterback Trevor Lawrence first overall. Up until the final three weeks of the regular season, it looked like this was actually going to happen. But then, the Jets won two games and ended up with the second overall pick, not the first. Despite this, oh. fans still wanted the team to draft a quarterback. And on April 5th, just a few weeks before the draft, the Jets traded the 23-year-old Darnold to the Panthers for a second, fourth, and sixth round pick. New York went on to draft Zach Wilson second overall. In his very first game as a Panther, Darnold was set to face off with his old team. Versus the Jets, he had 279 passing yards, one passing touchdown, one rushing touchdown, and got the win. Carolina actually oh. started that 2021 season 3-0. During that three game stretch, Darnold was averaging nearly 300 passing yards per game and only had Okay, I'm kind of nervous. This dude has a. It looks like, looks like bro's having a pattern <laughs> of switching teams, being really, really good, and then just tanking the rest of the season, bro. Yo, Sam Darnold, bro. You know what I'm saying? You balling right now. But if you. You know what I'm saying? If we, if we go 5 and 5, I'm going to rage. I'm not even going to lie to you. If we somehow manage to go 5 and 5, for the next five games, we, for the next, I guess it'll be four games, we lose, bro. Oh, yo, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm, I'm getting hot right now. One interception. Right, he was looking so much better than he did with the Jets. But then but. things took a turn for the worse. The team went on a four game losing streak and Darnold's play declined. He was throwing more interceptions than touchdowns and his completion percentage dropped to the low 50s. In week nine, Sam fractured his shoulder blade and was sidelined for the team's next five games. No. After that win streak to start the season, Darnold only won one more game. He finished 2021 by completing 59% of his passes for 2,900 yards, nine passing touchdowns, 13 interceptions, and five rushing scores in 12 games. Before no. the start of the 2022 season, the Panthers traded for another quarterback. Baker Mayfield. The two battled for the starting job during training camp, but during a preseason game, Darnold suffered a high ankle sprain and ended up being inactive for the team's injured, first nine games of the season. After Baker had struggled as the Panthers QB, Sam was in the team's week 12 starter. In that one, he helped lead Carolina to just their fourth win of the season. Sam ended up starting the rest of the season for the Panthers. He won four of those six games and threw seven touchdown yeah, passes he's a to good, three he's interceptions. A good quarterback when he's not injured or seeing ghosts and also had two rushing scores. Following that season, Sam was a free agent. He signed a one-year deal with the 49ers to compete for their backup spot with former third overall pick, Trey Lance. Darnold hey, outperformed Lance in the preseason and won the backup job, resulting in Trey being traded to the Cowboys. Sam spent the year behind Brock Purdy and saw action in the team's last game of the season after they clinched their playoff spot. At the end of the 2023 season, Darnold was a free agent yet again. This time around, he signed a one-year $10 million deal with the Vikings to compete for their starting job with rookie quarterback JJ McCarthy. However, during the preseason, McCarthy suffered injured. a season ending knee injury, so Darnold was named the starter. Tough. When the news of JJ's injury broke, a lot of people felt that Minnesota season was already over. But Darnold came out in the first game of the year, 
on it's fire. Closer, he was, was surgical versus the Giants, completing each of his first 12 passes. He finished the game by completing 79% of his passes for 208 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. The following week, in a game no one really expected them to win, Darnold led the Vikings to a 23-17 win versus the 49ers. Then, in the very next game versus the Texans, he threw four touchdowns and zero interceptions as the team won 34-7. And finally, in week four at Lambeau, he completed 71% of his passes for 275 yards, three touchdowns, and one INT plus a win. So yeah, Sam and the Vikings nice, are now 4-0 and the only- Even, well, now 5-1. and one. Um, I think this video came out a few, a few weeks ago. Even the game we lost the, the Lions, we played really, really good. We lost by, was it like a three three points? You know what I mean? And he played really, really good in that, in that game as well, bro. I don't think he had any interceptions. I don't know the exact style. I got to look it up. But, yo, Sam looking nice. You know what I'm saying, bro? I just hope, again, I hope he doesn't get injured. And I hope he keeps playing like what he does, bro. Because he, he is looking nice in the Vikings uniform. I like the way he's playing, bro. I like Undefeated team besides the Chiefs. Besides having these stats on paper that look great, he's also making throws that just look amazing. Some of these passes like, are ridiculous. So you know how did he get... Shout out. Some of, some of, some of it is, you know, receivers. They ain't going to lie. The Vikings got a nice receiver core, bro. I feel like I ain't going to say you can put any quarterback in there and they're going to win, bro. But you could put like any decent quarterback in the Vikings lineup, I feel, and I feel like they will succeed because the, they just, we, just, we just got really good. Right now, we have a really good offense. Ain't gonna lie. Get here. How did he go from a draft bust to a player some are calling an MVP candidate? Well, it's a few things. First off, the Jets put him in a terrible situation like we already talked about. He was young and raw and wasn't given the tools wow. to actually develop. A big knock on him coming out of school was his sloppy footwork. That never got the chance to be fixed in New York because the line was so terrible. Even with that poor old line, I think he could have had some success with a competent head coach. Which brings me to my second point. Kevin O'Connell, the Vikings head coach. O'Connell is one of the league's best offensive Hello, minds. I, I, his I, scheme bro, and play calling have allowed that. Darnold to thrive. In the past, Sam O'Connell. struggled with poor decision making and trouble reading defenses. However, O'Connell is able to consistently scheme open receivers, which makes decision making making much easier for his QB. Darnold always had the physical tools. He could make any throw on the field. His problem was the mental side. But now that he has a coach that can actually run an offense, he's thriving. And don't get me wrong, just because O'Connell is able to scheme guys open, it doesn't mean these are all easy passes. Darnold is out there making some really impressive throws that other QBs wouldn't be able to make. I mentioned Le'Veon Bell in this video. If you wanna learn more about all the craziness the real little video, I ain't gonna lie. She she hit a lot of points there. I didn't even like really understand Sam though. I actually had no idea where he came from. Let's say Sam, I mean I know I knew of him, bro. But I didn't even know he was on the, he went from the 49ers to the Vikings, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I thought I thought he was like deep, deep down in the depth chart of the Jets still. I ain't gonna lie. I thought he was still over there with the Jets, bro. But yo, W Sam Daniel, W Vikings, and yeah, let's let's make let's make a great playoff run. You know what I'm saying? Let's make a beautiful playoff run, please and thank you, you know what I'm saying?